The animation begins with these huge monsters called Kanju attacking Australia. The big organization in charge, the PPDC, sent out giant robots, Jaegers, to fight them off. But it didn't really work out and the Javiers were defeated. With no other option, PPDC had to move everyone to safer cities in just five days, and they called this Operation Black. Now there was this young duo, Rena and Ford Travis, controlling one of the Jagers. They actually managed to be a kaiju. After their win, they rushed to a bus with their kids, Haley and Taylor, on board. The kids were in trouble because another Jager called Ripper was attacking them. Then Brina and Ford didn't waste any time and jumped into the fight. While all this was happening, word got out that everyone had to get to Sydney, since Operation Black was starting. Brina and Ford quickly drove the bus away from the danger, but it wasn't smooth sailing. The place they were heading to, the PPC base at Shadow Basin, was gone and another huge kaju was after them. But, they managed to deal with it and got back to their kids. At that moment, Haley and Taylor were full of questions about what was going to happen next. Then, Brina and Ford decided that the kids would be safe staying in a valley for some time while they went to find help. Before leaving, Brina gave Taylor a special necklace that belonged to Jager pilots and promised they'd come back for them. Taylor, being a good brother, also promised to look after his sister Haley while they waited. Five years later, Taylor's parents still haven't come back. But life goes on for Taylor and Haley. At that time, Haley's helping out her boyfriend Corey, who's planning to go to Sydney. Corey wants Haley to come with him, but Taylor shows up just in time, reminding her to look after the garden and telling Corey that Haley's not going anywhere since she left the valley. But then, Taylor couldn't find Haley anywhere until a friend mentioned that she was back at home. When Taylor and another friend, Rosa, found her, they discovered a Jager pilot's helmet with her. At that time, Taylor wasn't happy, worried about Haley being in a dangerous place, especially since he promised to always look after her. Haley, on the other hand, was tired of being in the same place for five years and didn't believe their parents were coming back. Hearing this, Taylor got upset, which made Haley cry and run away. Next thing, Taylor's asking around for Haley and someone mentioned she went to the edge of the valley. Turns out, Haley was trying to make a getaway, but she ended up falling into a PPC hangar. Soon after, Haley stumbles upon a Jager called Atlas. Then, curiosity gets the better of her, and she hops in. Inside, she meets an AI named Loa. Lo figures out that Haley is new to this and starts a holographic training program for her. But training to be a pilot takes six months and Haley's impatient. Then, she rushes through the lessons only to find out she can't pilot the Jager without a co-pilot. Just in time, her brother Taylor shows up. Lo knows Taylor was a cadet, so training mode is switched on. But surprise, it brings a giant kaiju named Copperhead to life. At that time, everything they knew, the valley and the people, all get destroyed, leaving just Taylor and Haley. They have no choice but to operate the Jager. However, it's a bit tricky, since they have to mentally sync up, and Haley's struggling. Then, right when Copperhead attacks them, they finally manage to sync. But there's a catch cause Atlas doesn't have any weapons because it's just for training. And because of that, they have to fight this giant monster with their bare hands. Fortunately, with some help from Loa, they manage to push Copperhead into an abyss. But that's just a temporary fix. Soon after, they return to the valley and try to call for survivors, but no one answers. Seeing her friend Rosa not making it, Haley blames herself. But then, Taylor decides it's time they leave the valley to search for their parents. However, the journey isn't easy for Haley cause she's haunted by bad memories. Knowing that Taylor tries to keep her focused, especially when Atlas goes off track because it runs out of battery. Then, Haley keeps blaming herself even though Taylor tries to help her accept what happened. But Haley's pretty stubborn and just walks away. Lo then gives Taylor a tip that they can find batteries at the PPDC headquarters in Meridian, which is close by. Soon after, Taylor goes there, but before that, he was sharing some info about the batteries with Haley and asking for her help. Thankfully, Haley decides to join and Taylor tries to cheer her up with some good old memories of Meridian and helping her understand it wasn't her fault that people around her had died. But guess what? The Kaiju Ripper is now after them. Fortunately, Haley pulls off a great escape, leaving Taylor to deal with outsmarting the Ripper. Once they manage to get away, they face a new challenge. At that time, they have to cross a river while the Ripper is still on their tail. Out of nowhere, a Kaiju Jager hybrid shows up, devours the Rippers, and sets its sights on them. 
With no other option, Haley and Taylor take a leap into the river. While in the river, Taylor has a flashback to when he saw his parents Jager and earned his pilot certificate. Haley's feeling down because she thinks she won't see her brother again once he's in the dormitory. But then, Taylor reassures her that he'd call her if he had a cell phone, cheering her up a bit. Turns out, Haley is trying to wake Taylor up. And once he's awake, he's thrilled because they've drifted right in front of the PPC headquarters. They follow those directions to the fourth floor basement, but just as they get there, the Ripper makes a comeback. Meanwhile, Haley and Taylor decide to split up, and Haley stumbles upon a battery in a room. But it's connected to a tank with a boy inside. Soon after, he joins her and is shocked to see the child, seemingly abandoned by PPT. Haley can't stand the thought of leaving him there and insists on breaking him out, using an iron pipe to smash the tank. However, Taylor thinks it's a risky move considering the kaiju could show him any time, but they don't really have another option, so he helps out. Sure enough, the Ripper figures out where they are. At that time, Taylor holds the entrance while Haley keeps working on the tank. Just when things seem hopeless, the boy manages to burst out of his tank and is surprised to see Haley. They need to leave in a hurry and grab the batteries, with Taylor carrying the weakened boy as they're pursued by the Ripper out of the headquarters. Haley then comes up with a plan to get the Kaiju Jager hybrid to deal with the Rippers, and it works. The Rippers are eaten, giving Haley and Taylor a chance to escape. However, there's a bit of a setback cause the battery they took is damaged. But Taylor is just grateful they're safe thanks to his sister, and this touches Haley. The next day, Taylor spots a group of riders in the distance and quickly wakes up Haley to tell her. At that time, Haley agrees they should approach them. But Taylor isn't keen on bringing the child along. However, Lo isn't up for babysitting either, so they end up bringing the kid with them. Meanwhile, a kaiju eel is swimming in the river, washed by the group of riders who are after some kaiju eggs. Soon after, Taylor and Haley arrive at the riverbank, they met a kid named Boy, and keep an eye on the riders nabbing kaiju eggs. Then, in the midst of this, they don't notice Boy running into the river, alerting the kaiju eel to their presence. Luckily, the eel is defeated, but then a guy named Richter aims a gun at Taylor. Suddenly, a woman with him tells him to chill and asks Taylor where they're from. Taylor says they're just passing through, which the woman buys, especially after seeing Boy. She invites them to join her group at the Bogan settlement and introduces herself as May. Soon after, they all head to Bogan in a truck, with Boy curious about the kaiju eggs but May telling him to back off. As they enter Bogan, a guy named Spider, who works for the boss Shane, spots them and reports their arrival. Once they get there, May fills in the group about what happened at the river and introduces Taylor and the others to them. At that time, Shane welcomes everyone warmly, instructing Richter to provide food and clothes for Boy. He also asks May to figure out if Taylor is hiding something and to keep things calm during the trade with Ferno's group. Soon after, Ferno's team rolls in with Jager's spare parts. Shane, however, is more interested in a Jager battery. At that time, Taylor is surprised to see these items and May explains that batteries are scarce and pricey, leaving him wondering about their value and my puzzled by his curiosity. Meanwhile, Shane presents kaiju eggs, but Ferno's crew isn't happy cause the eggs aren't what they agreed upon. Then, Shane explains they're from a dead kaiju. Reluctantly, Ferno's team agrees to trade for a battery, but Shane pushes his luck and demands two. Suddenly, tensions escalate as guns are drawn on both sides. Haley urges Taylor to escape, but they're caught by Richter who's ready to pull the trigger. In the nick of time, Haley fights back, chaos erupts, and Shane manages to snatch all of Ferno's batteries before sending them packing. At that time, Shane wasn't too happy with Mai for bringing Taylor and his friends along. Me quickly let Shane know that Taylor was after Jager batteries. But this led to Taylor being taken to an interrogation room by Shane, where he was asked a bunch of questions like how a kid and a girl managed to walk down a mountain with him. However, Taylor stayed silent for a while, till memories from his past started coming back. To his surprise, Shane had witnessed many moments from Taylor's life, including some tough times like the final goodbye with his parents and a disagreement with his younger brother that led to finding Atlas. Seeing Atlas made Shane smile contentedly, signaling the end of the questioning. Then he walked out, claiming Atlas was his, leaving Taylor in a bit of pain, but showing signs of getting better. May then clarified that Taylor was feeling tired because Shane used a technique called drift to ensure he wasn't hiding anything. Moving forward, Shane took Taylor, Haley, and Boy to Meridian. He planned to operate Atlas and directed his crew to unload the necessary gear. Meanwhile, Shane asked May to find Joel. Soon after, Taylor, stepping out of the truck, felt defeated seeing Atlas being taken over and expressed his disappointment in his younger brother. 
But Haley lifted his spirits, assuring him that there was no way folks like the Bogan group could operate the Jager. At the same time, May was successful in locating Joel. Joel, a Jager technician and Shane's go-to guy, wasn't really interested in Jagers at the moment mainly due to his fondness for drinking. But when Mai mentioned that the pilot was a cadet's son, Joel decided to check it out. Soon after, Shane showed up with batteries for Joel to get the Jager up and running, which meant they needed someone to co-pilot. However, Mai wasn't up for it. Just then, Haley stepped in, suggesting that she could operate Atlas. But Shane wasn't having it and instead, hinted at having one of the Bogan troops as the co-pilot. Sadly, Joel didn't have much of a choice but to follow Shane's directive. However, things didn't go as planned when they tried to activate Atlas. Lowell refused to operate it due to Joel's high alcohol levels. Even with the co-pilot stepping in, none of the Bogan troops could make the drift work, which frustrated Richter and upset Shane, making some of his friends victims in the process. Shane seemed indifferent, indicating that Haley and Taylor might still have a chance. In the midst of this, Roy went missing but was later found catching a snake, giving Haley quite a scare, but thankfully, he was alright. At the same time, Joel was trying his hardest to drift, looking for the right co-pilot. It didn't take long before the co-pilot couldn't handle it anymore, causing an alarm to go off, which caught Copperhead's attention. Then he rushed towards the noise. Meanwhile, Spider, who was keeping an eye on things, quickly reported back to Shane. With Joel stepping out of the con pod, looking pretty out of it, Shane found himself without a pilot. Then it hit him that Copperhead showing up was because of Taylor, who had managed to defeat him. Regardless, Taylor was ready to step up and pilot Alice, wanting his little brother by his side. But Shane wasn't letting Haley join. That's when Mai offered to step in. Only then did Shane agree, making sure to instruct Mai to escape with Atlas and meet him at the Bogan camp. Soon after, Shane and his crew set off ahead, dodging Copperhead and bringing Haley and Boy with them. On the other hand, Taylor and Mai were starting this thing called a drift. But there, Lo warned them it could be dangerous and sure enough, Mai got stuck in memories from her past. Taylor was trying to help her snap out of it, and at the same time, Copperhead found out where they were. During all this, Mai saw Taylor's past, which kind of connected them more. There, Mai had to share her own story about how she was used by Shane to do some really bad stuff, and how she even wanted to get back at Shane, who, turns out, had helped her drift so Atlas could run. Weirdly enough, Taylor got lost in Mai's past too. Mai was like, focus, because Copperhead was getting close. Now, Atlas didn't have any weapons, so getting away was super important. But Taylor was done running. He asked Mai to help him fight Copperhead, but it didn't go so well cause Atlas lost an arm and Copperhead tried to eat him. But hey, it gave Taylor and Mai a chance to escape. After all that, Mai reached out to Spider to turn on the minefield. Southridge it is. But all it did was make Copperhead pass out for a bit. Finally, Taylor and Mai made a run for the camp where they found Shane pretty mad at Mai for making a quick decision. He was talking about big losses and how he regretted bringing her along. When Taylor saw Shane getting mad at Mai, he jumped in to defend her. He confessed that it was his idea to fight the kaiju, which made Shane even angrier at him. Then, Haley pleaded with Shane to let them go and Mai realized that if it weren't for Taylor, she wouldn't have met Jager. So Shane decided to let them leave before dawn. But Taylor wasn't ready to go, especially seeing Joel struggling to fix Atlas. May, however, believed Shane's promise and insisted they should leave fast. At that time, Richter and Shane were keeping an eye on them and May urged everyone to leave quickly. Little did she know, Shane had instructed Richter to get rid of them without her knowing. All May knew was that Richter was supposed to watch them. She was then told to check on Joel with a warning that if Jager wasn't ready by the afternoon, Joel would be in trouble. Unfortunately, Joel was having a hard time because of the drift and some of his Jager memories were gone. He got some help from Bogan's men, but Shane didn't care and was still threatening him. This upset Joel cause he felt unappreciated and wanted to retaliate. Meanwhile, Taylor was upset about his mistakes, which Richter agreed with and decided to take his postponed revenge by going after Boy. Soon after, Taylor and Haley fought back, but they were outmatched and in danger. Just in time, Boy showed up in good shape and saved them. Taylor was ready to take on Richter, but Mai stepped in and faced Richter herself. Soon after, Shane tried reaching out to Richter, wondering why it was taking so long to deal with three people. Getting no answer, he sent his men to find Richter. Meanwhile, May went back to check on Joel, who was still having trouble fixing the Jager. There, she smacked Taylor in the comm pod to lend a hand. At that time, May was hoping that Taylor could get Jager out of there to save Joel's life. This surprised Joel cause he didn't expect May to turn against Shane. So he spilled some secrets about Shane and he didn't really have a family. 
Shane had taken Mai in because she was alone, but she had seen memories of Shane's supposed family while drifting, memories that weren't really his. Worse, Shane had taken Mai from her real family and wiped her memory. At that time, Joel wanted to get Mai away from Shane. Elsewhere, Haley and Boy were waiting for Taylor but got caught by Shane's crew. They were brought back to the camp, where Mai saw them and signaled Haley to play along. Then Mai let Taylor know what was happening, and he was all set to rush to his sister's rescue. But Joel stopped him, suggesting he should use Atlas to save his sister. Although running the Jager alone was deemed risky by Lo, Joel being a technician, knew it was possible and even showed how by using the ghost pilot's memory. At this point, Joel asked Lo to pull up the memory files of a drift pilot. Hearing that Taylor, having nothing else to do, agreed to give it a try despite Lo's warning. Soon after, he was ready to drift, and Lo displayed some pilot survivors for him to choose from. Then Taylor picked Kate at Herc Hansen and began the drift, experiencing Hansen's last mission against the Kaiju. At that moment, Taylor could feel the adrenaline and the pain Hansen went through. Meanwhile, Shane was sending his guys everywhere to find Taylor. He quickly figured out that Mai was helping Taylor when Atlas got activated, and she didn't deny it. On the other hand, Taylor, now in control of the drift, started causing chaos in Shane's camp. He was about to crush Shane, but Mai stepped in, making Taylor think twice. Then, Taylor hurried to rescue Haley, who was trapped in a truck, and they ran Atlas together. At that time, Haley urged Taylor to leave, but he wasn't leaving without Mai. Fortunately, Mai decided to join them even though Shane was calling out to her. Mai took turns drifting with Taylor as she was exhausted, revealing that her past wasn't much different from Haley's. Nevertheless, the drifting was successful. Together, they managed to wreck Shane's truck, ensuring he couldn't follow them as they made their escape. Feeling a bit distant from Shane, Taylor and the group decided to take a break. Out of the blue, Shane tried to contact Mai through a device, but when she didn't answer, Joel did, and it turned out to be a bomb, taking Joel out instantly. At that team, Mai was seen burying Joel, guilt written all over her face. Haley, having been in such a position before, tried to comfort her, but Mai pulled away. Still, Haley reassured her that she wasn't alone cause she had her and Taylor. Me, tough to convince, wandered off alone, prompting Haley to seek Taylor's help. Unexpectedly, Boy spotted the breach the entrance for Kanju, signaling that it was time to flee. It was then they noticed Mai was gone. Boy, taking advantage of the confusion, slipped away unnoticed, but Lo was on his trail. Realizing Boy's disappearance, Taylor and Haley quickly boarded Atlas to search for him and May. Just then, the breach opened up right above them, but luckily, they managed to navigate Atlas to safety. Then they asked Lo to track Boy, who was last detected near the breach. To get there, they had to traverse through a dark, eerie area filled with remnants of Kaiju and Jager, like a graveyard of giants. Surprisingly, Taylor recognized one of the Jager Titans and recalled fighting alongside its pilot against the Kaiju, which puzzled Haley. Then Lil clarified that this might be an effect of drifting with the ghost pilot, causing a mix-up in memories. Still, Taylor and Haley needed to concentrate on finding Boy, but weirdly, Lo started glitching after picking up a signal from the Jager Horizon and Atlas powered down, leaving both Haley and Taylor in awe. Soon enough, Lo was back in action and located Boy, who was near the breach where a Category 3 Kaiju named Acid Quill was lurking. There, Acid Quill attacked Atlas, who was now down to one arm and things looked grim. Out of nowhere, a Kaiju Jager hybrid showed up and swiftly defeated Acid Quill. It seemed to recognize Boy and Haley, thinking Boy was in danger, rushed to protect him. But, to their surprise, it was actually Boy who was shielding them, leaving Haley and Taylor speechless. Even possible. Then it was Boy's turn to approach the hybrid to do the drift. But the drift's frequency was so strong that Haley and Taylor were pulled into it too. They saw that during the Huprising War, many Jagers fell victim to a Kaju virus, but one Jager Apex transformed into a Kaju Jager hybrid, with no human or Kaju piloting it. At that time, Apex wreaked havoc on the PPCC headquarters and sensed Boy's presence, unveiling Boy's pass and his first encounter with Haley. Haley found herself drifting with Apex too. After this revelation, Apex left but returned shortly with a new Jager arm for them, which Haley and Taylor gladly accepted. With a new arm attached to Atlas, Apex departed again. After the whole Apex encounter, they invited Boy into the con pod. Before they closed the door, Boy took a moment to say a long goodbye to Apex. Then Haley, Taylor, and Boy were back on their journey. 
Along the way, Taylor practiced using Atlas's new saber chain weapon on its right arm. Curious about what made Lowell malfunction, Taylor tried to drift with it, but Lowell wasn't spilling any beans, even though Taylor felt something was off. Out of the blue, Haley called him over to show a picture of a boy who had turned into a giant. At the same time, Lowell detected another Jager nearby in Clayton City. So Haley and Taylor decided to check it out, especially since the Jager signal was popping up only once every hour. But surprise! Someone shot at Atlas, and it turned out to be Mai. She wasn't thrilled about being followed even though Haley and Taylor were just tracking Jager signals. Mi suggested they walk if they couldn't handle the kaiju and showed them the way out through a cafe, leaving Haley wondering why Mai chose to be in that city alone. But Mei kept her reasons to herself. Before leaving, Boy waved goodbye to Mai, touching her heart. Mei then invited Taylor and the others to have some hot chocolate. Oddly, as she looked into her glass, she saw reflections of her happy past with her parents before Shane appeared and it all vanished. All because Boy started playing a music box. Then Haley asked him to dance and invited Taylor to join. Soon, Mai was also dancing along, truly enjoying the music with everyone, with the mirror showing a reflection of a younger Mai. When the music box was turned off, it was a cue for Taylor and the others to get moving. Before they left, Taylor left Atlas in Mai's care and Haley did the same. Then Mei shared that she remembered where she came from, but her memories were still a bit fuzzy. Then Haley, Boy, and Taylor went off to find the Jager. Suddenly, Boy froze for a moment when he saw a familiar symbol. At that time, Taylor couldn't believe his eyes when he spotted the Jager Hunter, which the Jager that once belonged to his parents. This sight brought back memories of his mother promising to return for him and his sister. Unsure why Hunter ended up there, Taylor decided to investigate. Meanwhile, Mai hopped into Atlas's con pod and asked Lo about her memories from the cafe, but Lo couldn't help as drifting wasn't as simple as it looked. Taylor, exploring further, was surprised to find Hunter's missile still intact. Despite the damage around, he entered the con pod and discovered the last message from his parents. The message revealed a video explaining why they had to withdraw from battle as the kaiju were getting stronger. They had to escape to Sydney and ask whoever found the message to take care of their child, expressing their love before the video ended abruptly. On the other hand, Haley finding a family photo was overcome with emotions and had to step out of the con pod. Meanwhile, over on another side, Copperhead showed up and started attacking Atlas. At that time, Taylor and the crew could only watch from a distance. But oops, Copperhead spotted them. In no time, a car was thrown their way, knocking Haley out. Soon after, Boy jumped into action trying to wake Haley, while Taylor distracted Copperhead. Luckily, he got Copperhead off balance. Seizing the moment, he called Mai to join him in Atlas. Boy, angered by Copperhead's move against Haley, transformed into a kaiju. Unfortunately, Boy got stuck under some debris while Copperhead was making a beeline for Haley. Just in the nick of time, Atlas showed up and took on Copperhead. There, Haley was busy trying to soothe Boy, who didn't seem to recognize her. Soon enough, Boy chilled out. Haley thanked him for his protection. Seeing Atlas under continuous attack, she went over to Hunter and managed to release some missiles. She hopped into the con pod to get in touch with Atlas, instructing Taylor to bring Copperhead closer as the missile was all set to launch. But then the AI hunter system was down, so Haley had to use manual controls to aim at Copperhead. Haley, do it now! Phew, that was close. In the end, Haley was comforting Boy, hoping he'd revert to his normal self. May, meanwhile, just learned that Boy was discovered in Meridian. Little did Taylor and the others know, the sister of Kaji was keeping an eye on them. This is the end of the first season of this animation. The moral lesson from this animation is always double check where you park your giant robot, because you never know when a music box dance party will turn into a surprise monster battle.